Hey, welcome to Cape Men. Thanks for being here. My name is David Drum, and what you're about to watch is the teaching portion of our Tuesday Night Men's Group. If you're interested in learning more about who we are and what we do, be sure to look in the description of this video for the links to Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for being here. So this week is about this topic of interior examination. And really what that comes down to in the most simplest of terms is interior examination is Guys, is that me? Am I humming? Is it bad? I, okay, sorry. Dude, this night is just all kinds of wonky now. So interior examination is just self-awareness. So have you guys ever met someone who just absolutely was not self-aware at all? Like they had it all together in their mind. They thought they had everything figured out, but everybody else watching just saw something completely different. You get, anybody know that guy? Yeah, yeah. How many of you are that guy? <laughs> okay, see, that's weird that you would even admit to being that guy because that takes a little bit of self-awareness. So, you know, like, you're at least, you know, you're admitting you have a problem, you're heading in the right direction. Congratulations. We will we'll form a support group for you. <laughs> so, in, in the book, Rich Velotis points out that really men have, have talked about this virtue of knowing our inner self uh, for centuries uh, because awareness of self is connected to our awareness of God because we are bearers of his image. And since we're made in his image, knowing ourselves helps us to know him just a little bit more. In Psalm 139, King David writes, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. Essentially, what David is saying is exactly like Corey pointed out this weekend, is David saying, God, show me me and, and just expose the parts of me that don't align with parts of you. And King David wasn't the only one to put pen to paper to talk about this worth of self-evaluation. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. St. Augustine wrote, O oh God, let me know myself, let me know you. And the 20th century theologian Ice Cube said, you better checkity check yourself before you wreckity wreck yourself. <laughs> it's a direct quote. Um, but see, here's the thing. Some of us don't want to dig too deep because we know what we're going to find, right? We know the things that we've done in our life, but... What's weird is we don't always understand the effects those things have had on us. Even if that thing was done against somebody else, even if you're not that guy anymore, it still affected you. And chances are, if you haven't resolved that with God, it affects you still. And it's hard to admit some of these things, but you can find consolation in the fact that God does know you. He knows what you've done. He even knows how it affected you. And, he's, and yet, Jesus still chose to go to the cross on your behalf. Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So God knew us before we sinned. And even knowing what we would do, he still chose to do what he did. Romans 5.8 says it this way. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, God loves us all, but we have an enemy that doesn't. We have an enemy that wants to remind us of our failures and keep us from realizing that there are areas of our life where we still fall short of the glory of God, and he doesn't want us to change that. See, I've seen it written this way. The enemy knows your name, but calls you by your sin. But God knows your sin and calls you by your name. So as Christians, we belong to and serve a loving God, a merciful God. And as we follow him, we learn more about how he'd have us live, right? It's really what we do here. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? 
How can you say to your brother, let me take this speck out of your eye, when all the while there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now, Jesus isn't telling us that we can never go to a brother in love and speak to him about his sin. What he's saying is you need to look inward first. You have to deal with your own sin first. You know that part that search me and know my heart? The problem with internal examination, the the struggle that we have with this, is that it's hard work, and it takes time. And even though we're talking about internal examination, it's done best in community. See, for some of us, it just seems like too much work. We want to be transformed. We really do. But let's face it, we live in a microwave society. We've been groomed all our lives that things can be done in an instant. You need life hack for this, quick fix for that. And we look for those quick fixes. We look for transformational experiences when really what we should be looking for is a transformational lifestyle. Now, our men's conference was amazing. You guys here for that? You guys remember it? It was pretty awesome, right? (laughs) Pastor Kyle did a, a great job. But here's the thing. An event like that, should be an exclamation point on an ongoing lifestyle. It's never meant to be a magic bullet, a quick fix for anything. And if the conference was really the first time that you considered stepping across that line and engaging in a relationship with, with God, then the conference, again, is not a quick fix. It's not a silver bullet. It is the large font, capital letter, the start of a new page of a new chapter of your life. It's not a one-shot deal. So if you're willing to cross the line and do the work to look inward, I do want to tell you there's going to be obstacles that you're going to face. So the first roadblock to this transformational life is busyness. And busyness is, is just that. When we allow ourselves to be so busy that we're not adhering to the pace of life that God calls us to, See, this world that we live in and the enemy of our souls, they, they want to keep us feeling this way so that we don't look inward. And then even if we do feel that tug, that God's tugging on our heart and trying to prompt us to change something, we, we just don't feel like we have the time to do it. Now, what I will tell you is talking about pace and, and developing a pace of peace is an entire night's message all by itself. And if I try to get into that, uh, Pastor Brian's going to yell at me because I go too long like I did last week. Um, But, uh, and I apologize for that, uh, because it robs you guys of the table conversations. Um, But what I would tell you is every session we do up here, whether it's a conference, a breakfast, or Tuesday nights, all that stuff is on uh, YouTube, on the Cape Men channel. You can look it up, and you can see what we talked about last semester, about pace and Sabbath, and you can go back and you can look at what we t- uh, Pastor Brian talked about week one, where he talked about that pace and the need for rest. You can get right back into it. So, but that's the first roadblock. The next major roadblock is that many of us live compartmentalized lives. We all have different roles. I mean, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a sergeant with the sheriff's office, I'm a men's director, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a cousin, I'm a friend, I'm an uncle. Now the list goes on and on. And all of those are roles that I have, none of them are my identity. But if I spend too much time focusing on one of them, they can become a compartment that I live in. And what I would tell you is for years and years, I I lived a very compartmentalized life. There was the work compartment, and it was complete with work friends and work values. And then I had my my church compartment, and I had church friends and church values. And then I had my family compartment, and, you know, whether it was, you know, the immediate family or the extended family, you guess that we kind of had our own values within the house as well. And I think what happens is, is... as guys, most of us are task-oriented, right? We move from task to task. What needs done? Let me do this thing. I'm done with this thing. I got to do this next thing, right? And um, the compartmentalized life happens because we have these separations of tasks. The people involved in these different tasks at work 
you know, they want different things from me, they want different things for me, uh, and the same over here at church. They want different things from me, different things for me, and really, it was never intentional that I created these two compartments. It's just the two worlds never really met up in the middle. And moving from task to task and remaining busy enough in my day-to-day -day life that I didn't really notice the walls going up between them. But then, as he tends to do, God got my attention. Not once, but three times over the course of just a couple of months. Uh, and each time he got my attention, I was actually over here in my work compartment. Busy, doing the task, doing what needed to be done, dealing with the work friends and the, and the work relationships. And each time, three different conversations, three different wake-up calls. And what was interesting was each time in this work compartment, I referenced church in a conversation. It wasn't a conversation about church, but it was a conversation over here that I was having where I just mentioned something about church, you know, which is a whole separate compartment, and that compartment doesn't belong in this compartment. Or at least that's what the people in this compartment led me to believe. And it was like, you know, somebody would say, oh, man, I saw you driving down 41 the other day. You had the whole family with you. Oh, yeah, we were, we were just going to church. So three conversations, very innocent sounding like that. Three times I mentioned church. Three times I met with the exact same response. You go to church? Oh, see, you giggle. Because they didn't say it to you. By the third time, I'm sitting there in my own head going, is that so hard to believe? <laughs> like, yeah, I go to church. But what's interesting is God in his infinite wisdom allowed a different guy to be in the room. This one guy, a solid Christian guy who was not involved in the conversation, two of the three times he was in the room. So that third time it happens, he busts out laughing. He thought it was hysterical too. So he and I sit down and we have this conversation. And it's in that conversation where God really starts to peel back the layers and he reveals to me about these compartments. That why would anyone know that every week I go to church and God is doing some amazing things in my heart. And he's even, you know, infiltrated that home compartment. And, and he's doing some amazing things in my home. But I've never allowed that over into my work compartment. See, God had changed me over here, and then I'd show up at work, and I'd be the same harsh prick that I was every other day. And maybe some of you can relate to that. See, we all need to do this at some level. We all need to allow God to step in and show us where we set these separations so that the walls can start to be torn down. We need to allow him to remove some things from each of these compartments, you know, those planks in our eyes, and then allow him to start weaving all of those different compartments, all the different parts of ourselves together into this new person he's calling us to be. So, the first step in removing these roadblocks is to follow King David's lead, is pray. Pray that God would show you who you really are. Pray that he would reveal your tendencies and pray that he would expose the parts of you that only serve to pull you away from who he's called you to be. Then you have to do some hard work. At some point or another, you may need to go to counseling. And I have good news for all of you. Counseling is only for imperfect people. So, hey, you all qualify. Um, there have been plenty of times in my life since coming back to Christ where I've struggled with a thought process or a decision process. And I just needed wise counsel. I needed a wise outside perspective that wasn't emotionally tied to what I was dealing with to help me see the path that was in front of me. Another thing we talk about here frequently, you also need brothers. You need people around you to lift you up and tell you you're awesome, and also to tell you when you're being a moron. It's crucial, crucial. And it's gotta be the same guy so that you can believe them. <laughs> Look, if, you, if the guy's only ever telling you you're awesome, man, are you? That's, that's all I'm asking. See, because a real brother cannot be compartmentalized. 
A real brother needs to look into all those different areas of your life so they can hold you accountable to becoming the man you are claiming that you want to become, to call you out on your junk when you're not dealing with it. And here's the thing. In that discussion between my work and church compartments, that guy in my office became a very unlikely brother to me. We weren't friends. We didn't hang out. He had no idea what my family was like. But he had this wise outside view about the bridge between work and church. Because everybody in the office knew he went to church. Nobody could believe that I went. I, I appreciate that you guys find so much humor in that part of the story. But hey, at the end of the day, God can use even me. Right? So finally, you need to carve out time for prayer, for reflection, and time to understand the steps that God is calling you to take to remove the compartments in your life. And I get it. Some of you guys are already just inside. You're pushing back a little bit. You're like, I don't have time for all that. Let me ask you this. How many of you have a busy day tomorrow? Like, you got to hit the ground running, whether it's kids out the door, a meeting, a job, just your normal commute. Like, how, how, many, how many guys? Because my hand's up, too. All right, a lot of guys? All right, perfect. What's that? Does golf count or no? No. Golf does not count. All you retired guys, keep your hands down. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> That's self-inflicted if you're busy tomorrow. So here's the thing. So tomorrow morning, you got a busy day. You're already like, you're thinking past dinner time already to, to the, a chance that you might be able to stop moving as quick as you are. But you walk out the front door and you got two flat tires. So here's the thing. Not one flat tire, because you guys are all capable. You just throw a spare on and, and get on with your day with a slight delay. But two flat tires, because now you got to take it somewhere. And that's going to take time. And money. And money. So you'll make time for tires, but not for God. I'm just kidding, kind of. So if while you're at work tomorrow, the owner of the company, the CEO, the president, whoever runs your business, um, for those of you who own your own business, your wife calls, um, and asks you to do something, are you going to do your best to get it done? Despite how busy you are, you're going to try and get it done, right? How much more... Should we put effort into what God's calling us to? Because he literally gave us the air that fills our lungs. So here's our two main roadblocks again. Busyness and compartmentalization. And they feed each other. Oh, do they feed each other. How do you defeat them? You defeat them through your pace, through prayer, through wise counsel, which is mentors, counseling, and accountability, which is your, your brothers. These guys sitting around the table with you. And here's the thing, guys. This is about a transformational lifestyle. This is hard work, over time, in community. All right? There's no shortcut to that. Hard work, over time, in community. Because you guys have a choice to make. Every day. Every day you can make this choice. You can lean into this process or you can stay in the compartmentalized life that you have, which in reality are just fragments of the life that God's calling you to, to live. So I want to pray over our time at the tables tonight. Um, I did shortcut you guys or, or short you guys on time at the tables a lot last week, but it was a pretty important topic. Um, and uh, on that note, I just want to thank a lot of you for sending me messages, notes, or phone calls uh, to encourage me. Uh, that was not a lot of fun to do, but I did feel like God put it on my heart to tell you guys that, and I appreciate the, um, the feedback and your willingness to dive into it. So, thank you. Um, so, Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for these men uh, who continue to prioritize this time with their brothers, and uh, prioritize this time to learn more about you. Father, thank you for these leaders at each of the tables that, that give of themselves to encourage, to help develop and, and grow. And Father, we just ask you to, to show us who we really are, to show us where those compartments are, and to show us the steps that each of us need to take in order to start breaking down those walls. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Hey, thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, Cape Men's more than just a Tuesday night men's group. So in order to find out all that we have going on, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of our video content.